Looking now at the race for Secretary of State here in Nevada. An interesting race is developing here. Cisco Aguilar joining us, running for the Democratic side for Secretary of State. It's good to meet you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So uh, for those who don't know, tell us about your background, uh, why you're running for Secretary of State in the first place, and just who you are. Great. Uh, I've been in Nevada for about 20 years now. I'm an attorney. Spent my first years with Jim and Beverly Rogers at Channel 3, and then spent the last 14 years with Andre Agassi and Stephanie Graff. Um, been there for quite a bit. It's quite exciting. Why go into politics in this regard? Why run for Secretary of State? Secretary of State is an interesting position because it has two main responsibilities. One is you over, you're a regulator of elections, and two, you are the administrator for corporate filings. As an attorney at Agassiz, managing the corporate filings for the years that it was there, it's pretty difficult sometimes to use that system. And it makes me think about all the small business owners in Las Vegas that have to use the system on an annual basis. And they shouldn't have to hire an attorney to use that system. It should be logical, it should be functional, it should be easy to use and understandable, but still get the information that the state needs for a business to remain compliant. And then on the election side, you are a regulator. You are supposed to be a neutral person advocating for all voters in Nevada. It's not whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. It's giving access to every Nevada and the opportunity to exercise their voice and to be heard. We'll talk about the election component in a moment because there's a lot to that. But just getting back quickly to the, to the business and the licensure and all of that, th those aspects of the Secretary of State that office handles. I've used the website before. You're talking about business owners and the challenges they deal with. What would you like to implement to, to make it easier and more user friendly uh, to just do your business? Absolutely. I think it goes back to a statement my contract professor made in law school. He goes, don't ever try to overcomplicate a contract. Use plain language people understand because if people understand it, you're going to be able to get to a point of agreement quicker than if you're using fancy or technical language that not everybody understands on a daily basis. I think if we review the processes that are in the system now and try to make them more logical, I think that'll make people happier. Let's now switch to elections. It's gotten a lot of uh, attention recently for obvious reasons, uh, allegations by Republicans of fraud, uh, challenges to the last uh, major election here back in 2020. Um, some counties in the interim have moved to hand counting, most notably Nye County. Uh, should the legislature pass a rule to prevent that in future elections? And I guess more importantly, are you, just, are you a fan of this hand counting change in Nye County and others? No, I'm not. And there's specific reasons why. I think hand counting, there's a reason why automation exists. One, it goes to the fiscal responsibility of it. It's efficient. It's accurate. We have secure elections in Nevada. Our current Secretary of State, Barbara Sagaski, has done a phenomenal job of ensuring our processes are secure, transparent, and open. And understanding her perspective, understanding why she made the decisions she made, is exactly why I want to run for Secretary of State. Somebody needs to be in that position that is neutral and understands that this position is not about party, it's about the state of Nevada and Nevadans who want to exercise their right to vote. So. Well, your opponent in the race uh, has certainly made allegations, repeated ones, that uh, elections are rigged in Nevada and would implement changes of his own if, if he were elected. What, how do you convince voters that they're not rigged? I think it's twofold. One is understanding what the current secretary has done to investigate every instance of alleged fraud and her conclusions on why there was no fraud or fraud did not exist. Second is our court system. You know, being an attorney, I believe in the rule of law. I believe in our court system, and I believe that our judges have acted in an impartial way to say that fraud has not existed in our election cycles. The issue of voter ID has also been brought up in Nevada a lot recently. Uh, is expected to probably come up again in the legislative session that's upcoming. Uh, what is your stance on, on implementing some sort of a voter ID here in Nevada? You know, again, it goes back to, is, are we looking for a solution to a problem that doesn't exist? And if we can answer that question fairly and neutrally, I think we can have a conversation. However, knowing what I know and learning from the current Secretary of State and some of our registers throughout the state, is I don't, I think it's a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. However, you gotta go back to the basic principle of what is, voting is a fundamental right that's guaranteed to all Americans. And if you're gonna start to impede a fundamental right, you make, we need to ensure that we understand all the unintended consequences of making such a hard policy decision. Would you suggest though that everything is 
all fine the way Nevada runs its elections? Or are, there, are you suggesting there shouldn't be any changes at all? Look, as a business person and running a business, you're always looking for ways to improve what you're doing. It's always looking for opportunities to improve your efficiency, always looking to improve your security. We can always look at our processes and systems and do reviews and do audits to ensure that we are providing Nevadans the best possible election system we can. Uh, I'm mentioning your opponent again, who's, who's made some rather controversial election conspiracy uh, claims, uh, again, rather routine. Routinely, how do you respond to those claims? If you guys have, end up debating or something mm -hmm. along those lines, how would you respond to those uh, to those uh, allegations? Again, I go back to what our current Secretary of State has done to ensure we have secure and fair and open elections. Again, it's about the court system doing a review of those being a neutral party and in reviewing those outside of the Secretary of State's office, taking his claim seriously and saying this is the outcome and this is what we did not find. Another uh, issue with regards to elections that's been, uh, there's been signatures that went to the Supreme State Supreme Court, ranked choice voting, mm -hmm. which uh, will be brought up again and if it, it there's a long process before that actually maybe does become law. What is your stance on the idea of potentially bringing ranked choice voting into Nevada? I think is really, un again, it goes back to unintended consequences. Before we ever make a major policy decision or you make a big business decision about an investment, you're always making sure you understand the risk and you understand the unintended consequences. I understand the reason behind ranked choice voting. However, I think we need to see how it plays out in Alaska. Obviously. Alaska is using right it now. currently in its primary system. New York City has used it for its uh, local elections. And I think we need to give Nevadans a full perspective on the issue. It's not that I'm against it or not for it. It's just I want to understand more about it before we make a decision to implement it across the state of Nevada. All right. Um, I think that'll about do it for us. We thank you for joining us. No Cisco Aguilar running for Secretary of State here in Nevada. Looking forward to a very interesting thank you, campaign. Thank you. Appreciate it.